the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for His infinite love, mercy, and compassion, allowing us to be in His holy presence, in His holy church, and sharing His Word, which is the truth, the life-giving Word of His Holy Bible. I pray those who are with us in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, that you're always in good health and in good spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 99. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He dwells between the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his uh, footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were to them God who forgives. Though you took vengeance on their deeds, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Good. Can't hear you? Good. Can't hear you? Good. Come on. You can do better than this. How are we? Good. Oh. <laughs> Always be like that. On fire, baby. Um, we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Okay, before we start this blessed evening, uh, I'd like to ask uh, our beloved son and daughter in Christ, uh, Eddie and Michelle, to start this evening with this beautiful hymn.
to that. Lord, I need you every day, every hour, every minute, every second, every split second. Every breath I take, you are that breath. I need you always, not when I need things from you, but I need you for who you are and for what you are. I need you for your person. I need you because I realized there is no one, neither there was, nor will ever be someone like you, Lord. You are irreplaceable. You are the one and only. I need you for your love. I need you for your loyalty. I need you for your humility. I need you because you are Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Oh, and I don't need to say anything else. When you invoke the name of Jesus, but a piece of advice, don't ever, don't ever, when you mention the name of Jesus, don't ever just use that name on its own. You must show reverence, you must show worship, you must show uh, gratitude. Always say, Jesus Christ, our Lord, my Lord Jesus, my Savior Jesus. Don't ever just use the name Jesus just like that on its own. It is not enough because He is my Lord, He is my Savior. And every time I come and talk to you and about you, I will always talk with utmost reverence, worship, gratitude, honor, respect, and everything that is beautiful that comes with it. So, Jesus, my Lord, Jesus, my Savior. Don't ever just use Jesus. I, when I see that even in the books, when I see that written on its own, I get upset and angry and agitated. No, you can't just say Jesus. You must add, not add, but you need to put what this name entails. For everything is in this name. Everything of honor and exaltation is in this name. So, Jesus, my sweetheart, the love of my life. Amen. All right, let's start our topic. Book of Revelation, it's a new chapter. Chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. It is Revelation chapter 16 and verses 1 to 3 inclusive. Here we go. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome soul came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. 
Sorry, just for a moment. Uh, my beloved sons, you can sit here at the front. There is uh, some uh, empty seats here. You can sit right at the front. Just come at the front here. Yep. Okay. Chapter 16. Last time we were talking about chapter 15, and we said that chapter 15 was, is an introduction to the punishment of God that will come upon this entire globe. It is an introduction to the wrath of God, as, is, as the Holy Bible says, the wrath of God. And this wrath of God will come upon the entire world, upon the entire world. And we said chapter 15 is an intro, an introduction to this wrath. So chapter 16 is going to talk about the actual wrath of God. 15 is the intro, 16 is the actual judgment, punishment, wrath of God on the entire globe. And, um, and this wrath of God, we can also call it the great tribulation, which will happen in this 21st century. The great tribulation, the judgment of the Almighty God to the entire world. So we will read from verses 1 to 3, and let's see what the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us this very evening. Verse 1, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So he heard this voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, which we also mentioned and spoke of in chapter 15. He says to these seven angels, Go and pour out the wrath of God upon this earth. Now, Let's take the word pour, pouring out. There is something here very unique, how the Holy Spirit is actually inspiring John the Beloved to write. He says, go and pour out the wrath of God upon this earth. So he's talking about pouring out the bowls of the wrath of God, pouring out the bowls of the wrath of God upon this earth. Now, what is this bowl? This bowl, we see it in the, in the Holy Church during Holy Mass service. You know, when you have this vessel and you have the incense inside of it. That is the bowl. What is inside this vessel? We use a coal and we light it up and that coal becomes fire. And then when it becomes really engulfed with fire, we put the incense on it and then you see this vapor coming up, which has a lot of meaning and very deep meaning, biblically speaking. Everything, every church service that we celebrate in the Holy Apostolic Universal Church is biblically based. When we call these churches traditional churches, tradition here, my beloved, it is not what my dad earthly dad and your earthly dad has taught us no tradition meaning church fathers filled by the holy spirit revealed revealed to them by the almighty god on how they should perform these services how they should actually put him in this specific order all biblically based one day in the near future we will explain the Holy Mass service to all of you. Then you'll see oh, the depth and the beauty. Why this service is done in this particular way, in this particular order. Amazing. All biblical. Tradition means biblical. Yes? There we go. So now, he heard the voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God upon this earth. Now, in this vessel, there is fire. There is fire. But John the Beloved uses the word pouring out. 
Yet fire does not, does not get poured out. Fire just comes and engulfs everything in its wrath. You know, when we have our bushfires in Australia, very famous, some are natural, most are deliberate. <laughs> so, did you get that? Okay, good. <laughs> when we have our bushfires, the fire doesn't get poured out. The fire just comes and engulfs everything in its path, in a blink of an eye. What gets poured out? Thank you very much, water, exactly. And we say that, isn't it, during our, you know, normal dialect with one another conversation. Uh, darling, can you please pour me a glass of water? Ah, so the word pour relates to water. Relates to water. Now why? Why water? Water here resembles the Holy Spirit. Or oh, the Holy Spirit is actually spoken of and referred to by water. When we go to the book of Joel, Joel is one of the Old Testament prophets. When you go to Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 29, Joel 2, 28 to 29, it is the Lord himself speaking through the prophet Joel. He says, I will pour out my spirit on your sons and daughters in the end times. I will pour out my spirit in the end times on your sons and daughters. They will see dreams and they will see visions, says the Lord. So he says, I will pour out my spirit and the water gets poured out. Now, when you come to water, why does water resemble here the Holy Spirit? For one profound reason. Water, as far as water traveling or travel, water can only travel from above to below. It can only descend, it cannot ascend when it travels, true? So water can only descend, cannot ascend. It is exactly the Holy Spirit who is God. God with His Spirit, Holy Spirit, can only descend, go down, can never ascend, go up. Why? Because He is the supreme being. There is no one above Him and beyond Him. He is above and beyond every power, every, everyone that is in existence. So God's Spirit can only go down, can never go up. In this, it is likened unto water. But there is a problem. Or not a problem. Here, John the Beloved is talking about bowl which has fire in it. Now fire, you can't pour fire out. But he says, go and pour out the bowl of the wrath of God. Whose voice is ordering the seven angels Christ God himself is ordering the angels to go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God upon this earth why why pour out fire they heard the voice of the Almighty God now, when they heard his voice, what did they hear? They heard words being said to them. So what is the wrath of God? His word. His word is the wrath of God because that's what the angels heard. Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on earth. So his word is this wrath. When you read... In Hebrews 4.12, Hebrews 4.12, St. Paul says, the word of God is living and powerful and it is like it's sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God is living and powerful and it is sharper than a two-edged sword. So the word of God is like a double-edged sword. It has two sides to it. 
One side is water. The other side is fire. It's a double-edged sword. Yes, are you with me? Now, pouring out, look at God. He is amazing. Amazing in His love. Amazing in His mercy. Amazing in His forgiveness. Even when it is in the midst of His anger. When it is in the midst of His judgment. Of His wrath. He is still saying to all of us repent repent my word which is my wrath will come down upon you if you don't repent it will be poured out like fire which will burn you and decimate you but if you repent even when I am about to judge I will turn it into water and water is life cleansiness salvation you bring water to a desolate land, you turn it into an oasis. From a dead, dry land into a lush, green, beautiful, magnificent place, water brings life and gives life. That's why the Lord said to John to use the word pour out the bowl which has fire in it to say, even though I'm bringing fire upon this earth, but if you repent, even if it's the last second, just like I saved the one who was crucified at my right hand side, it was his last second where he cried out to the Lord Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. The Lord turns to him and he says, today, not when I come back, today, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. You see, even though you were gonna go to hell, even though when my word was going was about to judge you and burn you and sentence you to hell just as you cried out to me the last second of your life on earth I made my word to be water for my word is sharper than a two-edged sword one side is water salvation the other side is judgment decimation it is up to us it is entirely up to us, my beloveds. The Lord is saying, my word is one, just like I am one. I never change. My word never changes. My promise to you never changes. And my judgment never changes. When I came to give you my word, I begged you in the first coming. And I said, please receive accept my word if you accept my word it will set you free it will quench your thirst it will cleanse you from all of your sins it will bring you back to god once again and make you the son of god the heir to the kingdom and to the throne but if you reject my word i cannot change my word i cannot do anything about it my word naturally is sharper than a two-edged sword if you reject it you are punishing yourself not me because naturally my word will save those who receive it and my word naturally will judge those who reject it it's your calling not mine don't ever blame God don't ever say to God why did you do this to me God says I died for you what else can I do more than this I gave you my life, my child. There is nothing greater than one's life. When this life goes, can you bring it back? No. Well, I gave it with a big smile on my face on Calvary on the cross. Now it is up to you, my son and daughter, to receive my word, accept my word, or reject it. And there is an outcome and a result to either way. You receive it, accept it, you deliver and saved. You reject it, you are punished, you are judged, and you are sentenced to eternal life, hell and death. <sighs> like children at home. Like children at home when they disobey their parents by saying, Mom, Dad, we know what we're doing. Who are you to tell me what to do? Mom? Please mind your own business. Dad, 
Just stick to what you have known all your life. Leave me, live my life the way I know it, the way I see it, the way I perceive it. And by the way, mom and dad, just to remind you, especially if you're coming from a Middle East or a non-Australia, a different country to Australia, then you'll say, just stick to your old tradition and your old fashioned way. This is Australia, dad, mom, you know, this is not some Middle Eastern country. So don't tell me how to live. By the way, I just want to say one thing I remembered. The Lord reminded me. I, I want to apologize to our beloved Indian people. Sometimes, you know, just for laughter, nothing else. I may sort of speak in a different accent. You know, Indian, French, um, Arabs, whatever. So my sincerest apologies. I love India. I love the people of India. I always pray for you. And if I have offended anyone, definitely not my intention. So I love you. Okay? I love you. And thank you very much. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you. I truly love you. I, I, I sh actually, I wish to go and visit India. I've, this is one of my dreams. I want to go and see India. Acha, acha. <laughs> it is up to us. It is up to us. All of you who are here in the church and those who are watching us through live streaming. All of us, we hear the word of Christ. We, re we hear the word of God. What are we doing about it? Is it about hearing a nice lecture? Is it about hearing an eloquent speech? Is it about hearing a song being sang? A story being read? No. It is about your life. Christ has got to do with you. So now you can go out from this church and say, yeah, I liked it. No, I didn't like it. It's not about liking it or not. When you heard the voice of Christ today, what are you going to do about it? I beg you, next time you go to church, it's not about fulfilling an obligation, do, doing some sort of a duty. Christ will never, will never accept this kind of a approach from any one of us. Will never. If you're going just because mom nagged you to go, dad grabbed you to come, not acceptable. You need to say to yourself, Lord, freely I choose to come to your house, to your holy house, freely and willingly I choose to be this hour with you. I don't want to be in the world anymore. I don't want to give this hour to Satan anymore. I want this hour to be with you and you only because you are the only one. There is no one else. I can assure you, not because I've got a cross around my neck, not because I am dressed up in this kind of an outfit. No, I can assure you when the spirit leaves the body, whether you believe in God or not, whether you are a Christian or not, you will come to this truth, whether you like it or not. There is only one God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the guy you're going to see. And I'm saying it out of love and respect. You're not going to see anyone else. So if you are not worshiping Jesus Christ as Lord and God, the word is being sent to you today. Jesus is God. What are you going to do about it? Don't say, well, this bishop is Christian. Of course, he's going to talk about Jesus as his Lord and God. No, sorry. Just because I'm a bishop, that doesn't mean I'm going to talk to G about Jesus, that he's my Lord and God. It's not what I have read, what I have come to understand. It is what I have realized. The reason why I say Jesus is God, because this is the truth. Anybody home? This is the truth. It's the only one. You want to believe? 
Good for you. You don't want to believe, you'll find out later, definitely. But I hope it's not too late. Because the word will be fire if you don't. Young men and women, our beautiful youth, even if you're 80, you're still a youth. Huh? It's not about having teeth in your mouth or not. It's about the heart. Amen? Amen. So you're always youth. Well, the psalm says, you renew my youthhood like an eagle. Don't ever fall for the temptations of this world. Don't ever fall into the trap of Satan, your adversary. Don't ever fall for that. I beg you, my sons and daughters, I beg you, don't ever imitate the world. If someone says to you, let's go to a particular place which the Lord disapproves of, do not go. Let them, let them make fun of you. Let them ridicule you. Let them reject you. Let them cut you off from their circle. So be it. I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, accept for yourself to lose people, but don't ever accept for yourself to lose Christ. Don't ever. People can be replaced. Christ can never be replaced. Can never. So if there are people that are taking you away from the Lord, disconnect. Sometimes, the only way, sometimes, and I say sometimes, the only way to progress in our spiritual Christian life is by letting go of certain people that are still attached to us because they are a hindrance in our life. They are a hindrance. Detach yourself, be free, and run to the bosom of the Lord and throw yourself and say, Lord, I am coming wholeheartedly with all of my wrongdoings and foolishness and sin and I'm throwing myself and everything that I have at your feet, at your mercy, Lord, asking for your forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O son of David. Have mercy on me, O son of God. Have mercy on me, O God revealed in the flesh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Man, you're going to be here. Oh, Do you have any uh, commitments after this? They've been canceled. <laughs> They've all been canceled. Okay, so go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. Verse 2. So the first went, the first angel, the first angel. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. So the first angel out of the seven went and poured out that bowl on, on this earth. What happened? A foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Foul means unpleasant, loathsome, disgusting smell or disgusting sore. Foul and loathsome soul came upon the men who lived on this earth. We take the word soul and we put in its place you restlessness, no rest. Since we are talking about the great tribulation, then verse 2 is the beginning to this great tribulation. What is the beginning to the great tribulation? No rest. When you have a sore, you're in pain. You have no rest. You're in agony. You are going through so many different and mixed feelings and emotions. 
You don't want people to see you. You're embarrassed to mix, to socialize, to go, to come, because the smell and the looks of it is ugly, is terrible, is foul, unpleasant, disgusting. So there is unrest, restlessness as the soul. When we look around us now, is there rest amongst people? We have no rest, do we? We're very tired, huh? That's the beginning of the pain of the great tribulation. We're experiencing it, aren't we? But some may say, well, this has happened throughout uh, humanity, throughout history but not the way it is in the 21st century. It happened before, but it happened at specific locations within the globe, not across the globe at the same time. What we have been witnessing in very recent times, it's a global impact, effect. Everywhere you go, Everyone is going through, if not the same, very similar situations as mine. The whole world is speaking the same language. Lockdowns, social distancing, mask, Corona, Toyota, Lexus, lies, fabrications, falsifications, deviance, evilness. Everywhere. Speaking the same language. Even those who live in villages somewhere in a far away country and place, they still spray things in the air. Oh, climate change. Don't ever believe this nonsense. There is no such thing as climate change. It's a, another lie of the 21st century. There is no climate change. <laughs> there was this particular um, church, but it's very sad when I say church they had this gathering they were praying different religions coming together at this church and they were praying to mother nature to have mercy on all of them not on all of us on all of them so they were praying the Christians and the non-Christians praying to mother nature one with all love and respect please do not Take what I am about to say out of context. I don't mean to offend no one, but this is absolutely nonsensical. So one, I don't know if he was a Buddhist monk, stood up in the church and he said, now we need to learn on how to inhale and exhale. It's a technique, it's an art. Because if you know how to inhale, you will release less carbon dioxide, thus uh, reducing the impact on climate change. So now they want to get rid of the cows because the cows are causing the climate to change. But we've had cows for thousands of years. <laughs> Go and say that to a Hindu or a Sikh. They will chop you and they will mince you right there. You touch the cow. <laughs> so how to inhale? You, it's a, you need to know how to do that so you can release less impact on Mother Nature, on climate. With all love and respect, my dear friend, I wish the problem was about inhaling and exhaling. I wish. It's amazing how we give a blind eye to the wickedness of humanity. 
to the evilness of what people have become and are able to do. Child trafficking, killing, drugs, stealing, lying, destroying. You're talking about inhaling, exhaling? Please. I'm not going to inhale anymore. <laughs> You're praying to Mother Nature? You're worried that you've offended Mother Nature because you chopped a few trees. Well, you set millions of hectares on fire deliberately to get rid of trees. And what about the poison you spray in the air? Until when humanity will be blind? We lost track of the true divine God. We became fools and made fools out of ourselves. Fools. The 21st century is where the great tribulation will take place in. The beginning to this great tribulation, the first ball, which is the wrath of God, will be poured upon the earth. And those people who have the mark of the beast and they have worshipped the image of this beast, they will have foul and loathsome sores on them appearing. So those who went and had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Now, who is that? Satan. So every human being that went after Satan, worshipped Satan and totally denied the true divine God, they will never have rest in their entire life. Never ever. Because my beloved, the only time you can have rest when you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 13. And you read it all. When you read in chapter 4, the Lord Jesus says... He left Nazareth and he went to Capernaum. He chose Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew, his brother, and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. He chose them. He chose Simon, Peter, Andrew, James and John. James and John. Why? To take them to Capernaum. Now the word Capernaum, which is a... A city or a small town by the Sea of Galilee. The word Capernaum is a Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac word. Compounded, two words in one. Kafar Nahom. Or Nahom. Kafar Nahom. Kafar means city or town. Nahom means rest. Nihutha. Or Nihutha, which means rest. So Kafar Nahom, the city of rest, the town of rest. He chose who? Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. The Lord is saying, if you walk in these four names, I will bring you to Kafar Nahom, the city or the town of rest. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. Jesus Christ is our rest. Jesus Christ is our true Kafarnahom, Capernaum. Capernaum is not a city. Capernaum is a person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For in him we only find our rest. There is no other place. There is no other city. 
There is no other one that can give me rest except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But it requires four names. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Simon, Peter. He says, Simon is Shimon. And the proper pronunciation, Shimon means to him you shall listen or listen to him. Shma le. To him you shall listen. The Lord is saying, when you hear my word and you listen to what I'm saying, you are Simon. But when you listen to what I say and accept what I say, Simon, I will turn him into Peter from the weak to the strong, from the temporal to eternal, from earthly to heavenly, from a piece of dust to spirit living in heaven forever. Simon the rock. John, I mean, Peter the rock. When you hear, listen to him, you will be turned and changed forever. And when you become that rock, then the next name will be Andrew. Andrew means the serious one. The one who takes things seriously. Because since I heard your voice, Lord, and since I accepted your word in me, Lord, then I need to take the next step and that is I need to be serious about your word. I need now not only listen to you, but do by your word. I will make your word my life. The next step, I'll live it, not just hear it. That is Andrew. Now when you are serious and live the Lord, what will happen? James will come automatically. See, the names are perfect. In a perfect order. James, the one who follows in the footprints of another. Ya'qub. Ya'qub means, comes from the word, this is all Aramaic, comes from the word aqabta. Aqabta means, I am following in someone else's footprints. And whose footprint shall I follow in? The good shepherd. There is only one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures and still waters. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For I am James, Yaqub. I am following in the footprints of my good shepherd, Jesus. And when you follow in his footprints, the last one to embrace you and bring you into Capernaum, the city of rest, is John. John, Yohanan, Je Jehovah, the compassionate, God, the compassionate. God will embrace you with his compassion, with his mercy, with his love, and bring you into eternal rest. Come and inherit the kingdom of your heavenly father that was, that was made for you and prepared for you before the foundations of the earth. Come to your final rest. Jesus Christ is your rest. And I feel like talking today. <laughs> it's getting a bit hot. It must be I'm hot then. Well, I'm always hot. My name is Bishop Murray. I'm single and available. I'm hot, you're not. <laughs> Just kidding, not. <laughs> When so many people of our time and age, so many people are, have been searching everywhere, seeking every way to find rest. What is rest? I want to be happy. I want to be comfortable. I want to be at peace. I want to be rich. I want to be successful. This is all rest. Because everyone interprets rest in a different way according to their way of perception. So to someone's rest is different to another. But everyone is in pursuit of their rest. And the more they pursue this rest, the more they become troubled in living in chaos. Living is in disorientation have lost the way, have lost the target altogether. 
I thought I'll be at rest when I do things my way. I thought that I will find my rest when I go with these people, mix with these people, do as they do. I thought I'll find my rest when I become a doctor, when I become a bishop, when I become the Pope, when I become a teacher, when I become whatever. I thought I'll find my rest when I have millions in the bank account, have the best cars, the best houses, the best living, the best of the best. But I achieved all this. I became a doctor and I became the bishop and I became that rich man and I became famous. I became a celebrity in Hollywood. But the more I was in search of my own rest, my way, I was the most miserable, lost soul ever to exist on this planet. Because I searched for my rest outside of God. <laughs> Waste of time. You'll never find it. Where are those people who went against God, against family, against parents, against morals, against everything that is of value and done it their way? Where are they? Where are they, my beloveds? Where are they? What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world, yet he loses himself at the end? This is the Lord Jesus saying to all of us, if you can answer this very question, you have answered every other question that can ever come your way. If you can answer this question, you would have answered every other question that could ever exist. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world, but at the end loses it? What will you give in the place of yourself when that soul when that self goes into the pit into the grave what can you do to take it out of that grave nothing except one thing make jesus your rest then the grave is empty there is no death nothing is lost nothing is lost jesus has to be your rest where are you going to have your rest? Clubs, pubs, poker machines, alcohol, drugs, women, guys, boys, girls, in between. <laughs> We've lost the plot. We have lost the plot. I don't know what else to do to have my rest. I don't know, man. I don't want to keep you here for too long even though I'm very tempted let's continue so they had sores coming upon the man who had the mark of the beast and those who worship this image anyone and everyone who follows and goes after Satan they will never find their rest secret societies there are people that live on earth their names are not registered in any governmental body. They have no record that they exist. But poor little kids, they think by hiding and not revealing their true identity anywhere, they think now they are free and they can do whatever. Man, that is the biggest joke I, could, I have ever come across. Hey, you can't hide from Jesus. Hello, anybody home? Listen, my dear friend, sooner or later, you and all of us will die. We need to go to that grave, my dear friend. You can't stop this, no matter how rich, how wealthy, how, how in control you are. You can control the whole world, but you can't control death, my dear friend, you will die. When you go down to that pit, and you will have to answer to the Lord Jesus, and then let me see what you're gonna do. And if, I were, if I'm standing next to the Lord, I say, Lord, oh, yeah, that guy over there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Was he working for who? <laughs> Was he working for World uh, Economic Forum? United Nation? Lord, 
time out, please. <laughs> Can you leave him to me? <laughs> I will discipline him. I will teach him something he has missed out on while he was on earth. At the end, it's empty. It's vanity. What are we going to take with us? Nothing. Only our deeds, whether good or far from all of you, whether bad. Otherwise, we're not going to take anything else. Every material thing will stay here where it belongs in this realm. I beg you, my beloved, don't fall for the snares of the enemy and the deceptive ways of Satan. Don't fall. If the greatest lecturer comes to your university and he has certificates taller than me in whatever field he qualifies in, in whatever field he qualifies in, I was going to say something else. And they speak nonsense, do not, do not listen to them, do not accept what they say, do not believe in this nonsense what they say. When someone says to you, there is no God, they are blind, they are absolutely empty, they are speaking foolishly. Because I've gone there, up there, and I went down there. I've seen both. Well, actually, I've seen all three. The earth, beneath it, and above it. Above it, heaven. Beneath it, hell. And earth, humanity. Earth, temporal. Hell, ugly. Heaven, beauty. And the beauty of heaven, the love of my life, his name is Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Man, man, I love this man. Man, I love this man. Bro, I love this man. Sister, I love this man. Cousin, I love this man. Brother, mother, father, I... The crown of glory. Dad, from the bottom of my heart, I love you. Man, I love you. Ah. What party? What clubbing? What sabu fakhabibi in the backseat going, what, 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 dov, dov. where is Cervello? <laughs> we have this little angel with us, his name is Cervello. I called him earlier before we started the live streaming. And I, I said, Sharbello, come here, I want to give you something. He came going, wa wa duv duv, wa wa duv duv. So this is all he's learned from all these many lectures that we've said. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Sharbelli. I love you, man. I love you. We need the Lord, my beloveds. We need the Lord. To sum it up, you will never find rest until you find Christ. Believe me, I'm saying it with love and humility. I'm not judging. I'm not trying to convince you to brainwash you. No, please, please, please. That's not my job. But I'll say what the Lord has revealed to me. Oh, I'll say that. No one can shut this mouth except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'll say that also with confidence. No one can. Until Jesus says so. My Lord and Savior, no one can. So whatever people think, whatever people say, it's totally beside the point. My intention is not to judge. My intention is not to point the finger at you. My intention is not to say, I'm right, you're wrong. None of that whatsoever. My intention is one thing. I'm a vessel that carries this perfect God, perfect man in him. Christ the King, his voice is being spoken out of this vessel by him by his holy spirit by the love of his heavenly father his voice is being sent out and this voice loves everyone this voice died for everyone 
This voice is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. This voice is your creator. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God in nature and one God in essence. This is my belief. This is my faith. And I thank my Heavenly Father for sending His beloved Son, His only begotten Son, to be a perfect man on earth, dwelt in the womb of the Virgin of all virgins for eternities to come. Her name is Maryam. Mary, the love of my life, my holy mother, my sweetheart, I thank you for sending your son and your son accepting your will and fulfilling it till the end with absolute loyalty and faithfulness. And now he's given me his Holy Spirit to dwell in me through the holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, O Son of God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for now dwelling in this piece of dust and speaking through this piece of dust for the glory, honor, respect, and worship of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verse 3. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. And it became blood as of a dead man and every living creature in the sea died the first angel poured out the ball on the earth the second one poured it where on the sea generally speaking wherever you see in the holy bible speaking about the land about the earth and the sea earth israel sea non-israelite nations so the pagan world those who did not come from the 12 tribes of Israel are the rest of the world. So there is the Israelite cycle and there is the pagan cycle or the rest of the world cycle. So the first ball was directed to the land, Israel. Now Israel will go through the great tribulation because the great tribulation is directed at the house of Jacob which is the Jewish people of the 21st century, end of times. But this great tribulation, which is directed at them, it will impact the entire globe. The great tribulation is nuclear weapon, World War III. Some of the side effects of being exposed to all these particles is sores. Parts of your body falling off. When Israel gets striked by a superpower, that is World War III. And World War III will definitely be nuclear weapons. That superpower will not be America. We are sending a very, very, very urgent message to America. America Your only hope is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's first and foremost. But humanly speaking, earthly speaking, your only hope is Donald Trump. With all love and respect to all those people who have nominated their names to be the next president. With all love and respect, I'm not judging. Please, I beg you. Your only hope is Mr. President Donald Trump, period. If Trump is not your next elected president, you can kiss America goodbye because the people that are running it currently are nothing but traitors and evildoers.
And even though Mr. Trump is a human being and very weak, like all of us, and I'm the weakest of all. But take this from the Lord Jesus. Maybe one day I get the chance to meet Mr. Trump. Because I want to say to him a few things behind closed doors. Not in public. Yeah, not in public. The earth, Israel, the sea, all the other nations that are non-Israelites. So the second, the second um, angel, when he poured out that bowl um, on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died. It became blood. When he poured out that bowl on the sea, it became blood. The sea is the people of the world. The people of the world meaning those who have gone totally away from God. Totally away from God. The people of the world are the ones who have chosen to live their way not any other way. They chose to be the way they want to be. You see, the problem is when you do things or you become worldly, totally worldly, everything you think of is materialistic, worldly. Everything you do, every step you make, every, thing, every, every word you say, every thought you have, it is all about this world and this world only. I want to dance, I want to eat, I want to dress up, I want to have a car, I want to have a home, I want this, I want that. You didn't buy me a ring on my anniversary. You didn't take me out on my birthday. I will kill you. I will never forget this until, until the last moment of my life on earth. Poor husband, after 450 years, comes back and be nice to his wife, she will rewind the tape and say, remember? Remember on that day, which was my birthday, you forgot my birthday. Go to your mom <laughs> and live with your mom. Your bag is ready outside the house. Pick it and pack yourself with it. Just kidding. I'll tell you this little joke. Um, husband and wife started arguing and then it sort of built up. World War III erupted. The husband became so angry, he lost it. Couldn't see, he couldn't, he just opened his mouth and let go of everything that was inside of him. He told his wife off extremely badly. She runs into her room crying. After five minutes, the, the volcano husband sort of um, calms down, cools down, and then he, really, he realizes, what, what, a, what a humongous mistake I've just made. So with great embarrassment, he goes to where his wife is, to that room. He walks into that room, and he sees his wife taking all the clothes and putting it in the bag. And he said, honey, I'm really sorry. I don't know what got into me. I just lost it. I am absolutely sorry. Please forgive me. Forgive me. I'm a fool. I'm this. I'm that. I love you. You know I love you. I die for you. And all of that. After he finished saying all the nice words, he said, honey, what are you doing? She said, oh, no, it's all right. I'm just packing up the winter clothes because summer is coming. <laughs> so if you go wrong, fix it with some nice words. So instead of packing up and going to her parents' house, she said, no, no, well, I'm just packing up the winter clothes. It's always good to fix the mistake, isn't it? Amen? So husbands, you're always wrong, regardless whether you are right or wrong. <laughs> so stop arguing, give up, give in, and just say, sorry, honey, you are the president, I'm not. And then send her to me, and I'll send her to Whoop Whoop Land to learn her lesson. 
Just kidding. Love one another. When the second ball was poured on the sea, the sea became blood. People who live in the world, for the world, when they hear the word of God, it suffocates them like that blood that is dead. It suffocates them. The moment they hear something about Jesus, they find an excuse to pack up and leave. Like, imagine you're sitting with a group of people, maybe friends, relatives. When you're talking about the world, everyone is alert, is awake and engaging. Oh, the other day I went to, to Westfield Paramara and I bought this bag. It's a brand. What are the brands now? Chanel? Chanel. Oh, because I don't go shopping, so I don't know. So I bought this Chanel. It was cheap, $7,000. <laughs> and did your husband pay for it? Of course. He has no choice. So I bought it for 7,000. The other one, oh man, what about me? I just got this diamond ring, 25 grand. <laughs> the other one will say something else. Everyone is alert, fully awake. And then one of the, one of the people there, poor thing, he says, I went to this Bible preach of this good-looking bishop. <laughs> and, then, and then he said, the Lord says this. All the other ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you have to ruin this beautiful moment? We were having fun. We were enjoying it. We were celebrating. Talking about good things. Why do you have to bring God into it? leave him alone we are not ready for him because if we go to him we need to give up on all of these things which we love which we live for so it is suffocating his words to us is suffocation therefore i want to live free i don't want god to come and say this is right and this is wrong do this don't do this go there don't come there I don't want that. I want to be my own God. These are the people of the world. They are gods of their own. And that's why when they heard the voice of Christ, the word of the Lord delivered to them, it turned into blood. And blood also means death, even though it is your life, but it's also your death. When you lose your blood, you die. So it talks about death, suffocation. That's why people don't wish to acknowledge the existence of God because once they do so, they suffocate. They need to give up on their worldly lifestyle, yet they are not ready for it. And this was exactly what the people at the time of the Lord Jesus did. I can assure you from the high priest Caiaphas to all of them, they knew this man came from heaven, Jesus. They knew he came from heaven, but why did they crucify him? Because they were not able to give up on their own worldly pleasures. Because to, to follow Christ, I need to give up on my throne. I need to give up on my glory. I need to give up on people coming to me and bowing and saying, you are a saint, you are this. You are the one who can do this for me. You have the power, the authority, the position to help me. I, I, I became my own God. But when I follow Jesus, I no longer exist. People will start following him, will start loving him, will start listening to him. I become a nothing. I'm not ready for this Jesus. I'm not going to give up on all this glory for you. So what am I going to do? I'll say, you don't exist. It's the easiest way to come out of all this. Atheists, it is not that they don't believe there isn't a God, but the problem is a moral one, not a theological one. They have a personal issue with God. 
They're not ready for him. I can assure you, they have a moral issue. It was never theological. People of the world only love talking about the world. You bring God, they'll walk away from you. They will disown you. They will cut you off from your, from their social media platforms and thank God for that. If they do. So I turned into blood. Became blood as of a dead man. My goodness, the people of the world are living death. Can I, um, very quickly, give you an example. This is the person who chases worldly matters, pleasures, matters, materialism. A human being, human being is created always to be in need of. This is God's. He created us to be in need of desiring something. Desire is one of the most, one of the precious gifts God gave humanity. Desire. Buddhism, the ultimate achievement, they're trying to kill desire. They are chasing the mirage in the wilderness. You're chasing something you cannot kill nor stop because what God gives no one can take away the ultimate they believe if you kill your desire you become a God of your own you are in control of everything else nothing will control you for as long as you have killed that desire in you once you kill the desire you don't long for anything anymore the moment you don't long for anything anymore you're God you're in control but they have forgotten one thing if I don't have desire how could I long for God God put it but what do you need to do why you kill it control it manage it balance it instead of instead of desiring evil desire good instead of desiring darkness desire light instead of desiring death desire life Instead of desiring Satan, desire Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this is the worldly person. Since we in, are in need of something or someone always. So a guy will come and he says, um, you know what? I need to get married. I have to get married. I can't stay single all my life. He gets married. After a little while, this is worldly people. After a little while, she's not good for me. I'm not going to get married. I'll just be content with a girlfriend. After a little while, having a girlfriend, nah, it's boring. So you know what? Maybe I'll take a guy next time. Try it. It's not working with girls. And then I'll take another guy. And then it doesn't work after a little while. I'm not content. You know what? I'm going to marry a dog, maybe a tree, maybe a rock. Maybe I'll become one of them. Your pursuit will never end because you will never be content until you find God. You'll never stop because no one fills your desire. No one fulfills your desire. No one completes your desire except the one who created you in the first place. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's all the problem. They're missing on God. That's why they don't know what to do anymore. You want to marry a rock? Go and do that but as far as possible away from me. Otherwise, I will stone you with one. Just like the Palestinians do to the Israelis. <laughs> Get out of my town. Uh, we need to pray, my beloveds. 
Sometimes I joke, but we need to pray. We need to pray for every soul. Did the Lord Jesus purchased every soul, even the LGBTQRSTUYZ. He purchased them all. We need to, to pray for their conversion. Before it's too late, maybe in the near future they might come to the churches and say, you cannot, you cannot preach something that is offensive to others. So what your God says is an offense to others. So you can't talk about the way God wants it to be said. Well, mate, I only live once. I will not die a coward. Do you get it, government? So-called government? Who have sold their souls for Satan. To Satan. They've sold their souls to Satan. They've sold their souls to Satan. One African president, I don't know which country it was, but man, man, these Africans, man, solid men. And I'm not talking about what people wish to choose, but this guy, you know, these LG, you know, LGB. So this, they wanted to actually make it sort of official and, 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 and free in that country. The president grabbed two guys and threw them in the prison. They came to him and said, please set them free. He said, the only time I'm going to set them free when they're able to give birth to a baby. Then I will set them free. If they're able to produce a, child, a baby, I'll set them free. Isn't he right? He's absolutely right. You know what I don't get? Even though it's not our topic. You want to choose this way? Go for it. Why are you forcing it on everyone else? The rainbow flag is everywhere all of a sudden. What's going on? Hey, I, I didn't say you have to live this way. You choose this way. It's yours. You will answer to your decisions. You're free until you decide. And once you decide, you are responsible for what happens after that decision is being made by you. You go for it. I'm not going to stop you, am I? I'm not God. God will judge all of us at the end. But when you come and impose it on me and on my children, then I'll say to you over my dead body. But people of the world suffocate when they hear the word of God. They suffocate. Because worldly people wish to do things away from God. It's worldly. It's worldly. And every living creature in the sea died. Well, if the sea becomes dead, then whatever inside the sea will die. It's only normal and natural. Because the source of life to all the creatures is the sea. If the source dies, then everything that is attached to that source will die automatically. Meaning, those who chose to live their way and their way only, when the wrath of God comes in this century, they will die. They will, be, they, they will perish. They will perish. Amen. When that rocket that has a nuclear warhead in it, when it explodes, my, my, my. One day I was showing, I was watching this documentary about what America has as far as uh, nuclear warheads, these rockets. They have small range, medium range, and long range. Oh, amazing. So they had this kind of a replica of a little city of a, a hundred. Anyway, this, the small range rocket, the small range. Upon impact, upon impact, 150 mile or kilometer, I can't remember, it was a long time ago. 150 mile radius disappears from the face of this earth instantly. 
upon impact. A 150 kilometer radius vanishes. And then it creates an imbalance in the, in the, in the air pressure. So by creating imbalance in the air pressure, it brings out this cyclone. The cyclone builds up and can go up to 800 kilometers an hour wind carrying nuclear particles. Now nuclear particles are fire. Imagine 800 kilometer wind comes and hits me in the face with little fire nuclear particles. What they showed high skies like uh, skyscrapers melting like a like candle just like that everything in its path melting 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 800 kilometer an hour speed wind so australia can be wiped all of australia with one rocket long reach not, not small and it will come from zenjing wing I always forget his name. Huh? Jing. Teasing Wing. <laughs> yeah, from Teasing Wing. Chi. Teasing Ting. Ping. Teasing Ping. Okay. Very good. So you will get that present from Teasing Ping. Teasing Ping. Gee we, <laughs> you will say, gee we, where do you get that rocket? <laughs> um, what the Holy Bible is saying, you follow the world, you will end up dead. That's what it's saying. You become worldly, the end is death. Because life is only given from God and by God. You walk away from the source of life, how can you expect to live without Jesus Christ of Nazareth? You run after the world, you'll die. My child, you'll die. This is the Lord saying to everyone, why are you running? Where are you going? What are you doing? Stop, think about what you are doing and say to yourself, where is my dad? Where is my mom? Where is my mom? My earthly mom. Where is my earthly dad? We left him in another country, my dad, about 40 years ago. My mom just left me a few weeks ago. I've lived with her all my life. Where is she? Do you know how hard it is to live in that house? Because she's everywhere in that house. She's everywhere. It's not easy. But this is it. This is it, my beloved. I pray for the whole world to come back to God. I love everyone. Even though you people may misunderstand what this bishop is saying, but the Lord knows what's in my heart for everyone because he molded, shaped and formed this heart. It's him, not me. He knows me more than me, but he knows what is in this heart. I pray for the conversion of every soul. I pray for evilness to end. I pray for darkness to be decimated and overcome by the sun of righteousness, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for this enmity, for this division, for this hatred, for this jealousy, for this bigotry, for this false pride to end and God to be glorified in every human being, white, black, yellow, whatever color you are, whatever race you are, wherever you country you come from, God created us all, not the Big Bang. God, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in nature, one in essence, the creator of all and everything, visible and invisible. I pray 
love one another, pray for one another, embrace one another, but in the truth, through Jesus Christ, not outside of Him. Outside of Him is hypocrisy. Outside of Him is denial, is lying, is a false life. You're acting. Love one another in the love of Christ. Brothers and sisters, moms and dads, I beg of you, love the Lord. Embrace the Lord. Every morning you wake up. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this new start. Thank you, Lord, that you let me see the light of this world, which is the creation of you, my Lord. I thank you. And whoever is next to you, is it your wife? Is it your husband? And whoever is in that family, the moment you wake up, thank God, and thank God for the wife, thank God for the husband, thank God for the children, no matter what has happened till that moment between you, thank God for that family, because you will never appreciate it until you lose it. You will never. Thank God for the little house you have, for the little apartment you have, for the little studio you have, for the little granny flat you have. Don't look at what others have as far as materialistic things. And I'll leave you with this because I've spoken for too long and I'm so happy that I've done this. When it comes to spirituality, materialism, please, I beg you, when it comes to materialistic things, always look at people who are less below you, who have less than you. When it comes to materialistic things, always look at people who are below you. You've got a house, look at someone who has a little room somewhere. Look at someone who is living at the gutter, a homeless person. Remember those homeless people. Have mercy, show love and compassion. Next time you walk, you see someone sitting at the side of the road, stop. Say, G'day, mate. How you going, brother? Can I sit next to you? Are you okay? Do you need anything? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Have you eaten? Can I do something? What do you, have you got any clothes? Have you got anything? Tell me, what, in what way can I help you? We need to come back to our humanity. We are human beings. We are not robots. We are not machines, as some people are trying to do and change us and mold us into with this so-called AI foolishness. Evil. Get rid of all the, pe all the workers. Bring machineries. Bring the robots. They'll do the job. And sack all those millions of people. Where are they going to go? No more center link. What are they going to do? Jab him, kill him, destroy them. Stupid man. Fools, because they are worldly. Satan has devoured them, blinded them to the core. But we need to come back, we're humans. Interact with one another. Like what they did, you can't forget, it was only a year or so ago. Families were destroyed. Oh, you can't come if you're not jabbed. Because the health minister said, and who gives one penny about the health minister? Who are you, mate? This is my family, my blood and flesh. I'll go and I'll step on your jab. You go and jab yourself. I'll embrace my family, whether they are jabbed or not, and I pray all of them are not. <laughs> Biggest lie. Sons of the snake, son of Sat sons of Satan, liars. Liars. Well, I still pray for you, but you're liars. See? I love you but you're liars. I pray for you, but stop lying because judgment is coming.
No one escapes the wrath of God. No one. So Herrero, Ferrero, you can say whatever. Actually, go and eat Ferreros, right? They're very nice Italian chocolate, brother. Better than the, the nonsense you're talking about. You and your Klaus Schwab. And get some chocolate for your Klaus Schwab as well. And get a life. Herrero, Ferrero. Love one another. Pray for one another. Boys and girls, young men and women, please, I beg you, I beg you. Don't run away from the church. Come close. The Lord loves you. He wants you. The church is your mother. Embrace your mom. Because at the end, it's empty. Thank God for whoever people he has put in your life. Whether those people have given you a hard time or not, thank God. Because rem remember this. It is not always good to have people that love you always. Sometimes it's good to have people that are pain in the neck in your life. Because those who love you always are not doing you any favor. But those who stand and give you a hard time, they make a man out of you, even if you're a woman. And that's not definitely LGBTQRST. <laughs> thank God for everyone. And thank God for everything that has happened till this moment. If you have done wrong things, if you have done good things, the good things, thank God for it. The bad things, ask God for forgiveness, but don't dwell on it. I beg you, Satan will come and he will always remind you of the negative things. He will always make it pitch black, dark in your face because he wants you to lose hope. Give up. You have ruined your life. You have destroyed your life. You've done everything wrong under the sun till this day. Thank God now and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I have sinned against you in heaven. I'm not worthy to be called your child, your son. But make me one of those hirelings in your house. Come back no matter how many mistakes you've done in your life, how many wrong things you've, do you've done in your life. Today is the day of repentance and redemption. Come back. Come back. Never too late. For as long as this spirit lives in this body, it is never too late. Step on Satan in the name of Jesus, the one and only. Step on Satan and step on the pleasures of this world. I don't need to go clubbing. I don't need to drink tequila. I don't need to dance with somebody. I'm going to dance with Jesus Christ, the only body. The only body. Amen. You know what I was thinking just now? About a joke, but it's not coming. <laughs> you know what? It's beautiful when you yell and scream and then throw in a joke. That is telling you one thing. When the Lord Jesus touches your heart, you'll be very serious, but very easygoing at the same time. It's beautiful. If somebody has hurt you, don't ever hold it inside of you and say, I'll never forgive you. I'll never talk to you again. Man, it's not worth it. Just go and say hello and buy him a chocolate sundae. It's not worth it. If they don't want to say hello, don't be upset. Say, I'll come back again. I'll send you a message. I'll send you some flowers. Why are you angry? Relax, brother. You're wasting too much energy for what? At the end, it's the grave. We're not going to take anything with us. How about we embrace one another? How about we pray for one another? How about we love one another? Why are we making a big deal out of nothing? The world, all of it, is vanity. And I'll leave you with this. <laughs> Definitely, I'll leave you with this. 
When you read the book of Ecclesiastes, this is King Solomon in the Old Testament. Book of Ecclesiastes talks about repentance. King Solomon begins this book, the book of repentance. He says, vanity is all vanity of all vanity, everything that is under the sun. Vanity of all vanities. It is empty of all emptiness, everything that is under the sun. What is vanity? What is the thing that is empty vanity? This body. See, King Solomon is teaching us how to live a life of repentance when we realize the truth. Who is Christ Jesus? He says, this body is vanity, is empty. When you chase this body that is vanity, what will you end up? Vanity of all vanities. Because I've chased this body and the lust and the temptation and the pleasures of this body, where did this body end up? In the grave. What a vanity. And since I chased this vanity, I became the vanity of all vanities. In other words, idiot, dumb, fool, blind. Don't chase the body. If we spend 1% of the time we spend on dieting this body, 1% of that we give it to dieting the spirit, all of us are saints. We sit for days on end and weeks and months reading articles and reading charts in the morning, a walnut. and lunchtime, an apple. At nighttime, a little snack. Because I want to lose five kilos. Wedding is coming up. I need to lose it because the dress is not fitting me. So we go on diet. We stand in front of the mirror for hours on end, putting all these tons of mascara, mascara foundation and the likes. And then we go to the hairdresser. And I go to my eyebrows and this and that. When it comes to the Lord, I sway, I was in the church for two hours. My, that was torture. You were just looking in the mirror for 10 hours. How come this is not a torture? Because this is taking me to the world, baby. So it's oxygen. But when it comes to the church, two hours is a torture. Why should I come on a beautiful Sunday morning, sunny, stunning day and spend it in the church where I could have spent it in Bondi Beach? And listen to this old bishop talking for two hours and doing my head in. And I'm going to go and relax, sleep on that sand and get all the vitamin D and look at the sheilas of the world very colorful why should i come and then hear the lord says the lord says the lord says no don't be worldly because the world will end up with death vanity god bless you and you're so quiet <laughs> all right uh, wake up eddie <laughs> And Michelle, we want to hear your voices again. Let's, um, let's listen to this hymn, contemplate on it. Thank the Lord for this beautiful moment. Thank God for every moment, my beloveds. Thank God.
I surrender. I surrender to the will of God in order to live for God. Just a couple of announcements, my beloved, and then um, we'll come to the um, sealing prayer and then wish you a very good and blessed night afterwards. Um, just a uh, reminder again about our um, uh, trip overseas, um, sometimes in August. Um, by the grace of our Lord Jesus, we are uh, going to uh, Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria uh, to visit the people that, are, um, that have been suffering, uh, and, and more so in recent times of the earthquakes that took place in Turkey and Syria. So we're going to go and see some of those families, some of those be beloved people that are struggling. We, we get all the time... Um, you know, phone calls. Uh, we are always in, uh, in contact with the people there. Uh, we don't talk about it all the time because we don't want to sound that we are, um, you know, boasting about it and may, uh, blowing the trumpet. No, far from it. All glory to the Lord Jesus. But every now and then we need to remind one another as family of the Lord, as family of God, as family of Christ, um, we need to remind one another that there are people family members, beloved Christian, beloved people. 
even though even if they're not Christians but this is the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord always taught us to love everyone and never differentiate when it comes to giving a helping hand to someone when it comes to helping someone in need I as the bishop as a bishop I will never ever ask what is your religion what is your race what is your color where you come from I do not care with all love and respect all I care about my Jesus taught me to love you to be there for you when you are in need of that help I will be there in the name of my sweetheart Jesus Christ of Nazareth we will never differentiate so that's why we're going uh, to meet some of those uh, be beloved people um, in Turkey Lebanon and and Syria and that's why we want to mention this to all of you my beloveds if you would like if you wish to uh, help and support uh, a financial donation you, please it would be greatly appreciated you can send uh, you can see uh, the Good Samaritan Aid Society so you can go to this website it is Jesus G S A S dot org dot AU you can visit this website and you can make your contribution your donation through the website there is you can do a bank transfer or you can use PayPal as well direct credit into the account um, any donation uh, two dollars and above it is a tax tax deductible donation as well this is a non-for-profit DGR registered uh, charity meaning if you donate and you wish to claim that donation for your tax return you can do that we will give you a tax receipt and you can claim that on your tax return if you choose to do that we will be greatly appreciative of whatever donation you can give I can assure you the Lord is my witness I can assure you that every penny that comes to this will go to our beloved people that are really really struggling struggling and there are people literally are in the street as we speak literally are in the street so we're gonna and this has been a dream of mine for many many years uh, when I was a teenager I, I used to say Lord uh, help me I just want to be with the people that are in need and, and out there in the street I never thought of this never dreamt of this I didn't want it and I'll be I'll be sitting at the gutter with those people there any time of the day this is this is for me an honor a privilege and a blessing this is the Lord the Lord doesn't sit in high places he came to earth he was a beggar for love his profession on earth a beggar for love knocking at the heart at the doors of people's hearts begging them for love he was a beggar God became a beggar who are we to sit in limousines and walk on red carpets who are we so if you'd like to donate um, this is the website there are some flyers out there in the foyer if anybody wishes to uh, get, like donate cash we have a box in there a donation box you can you can put it in an envelope or just put that money in that box uh, we thank the Lord since we've made the announcement uh, about this uh, trip um, I think um, Within a day or two, we've, we've had about, I don't know, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 coming. Uh, so keep it up. All of it is going to go there. And I'm going to be jumping with joy, bro. I can't wait to walk in the street and see those people. I can't wait. I will kiss their feet. I can't wait. I can't wait. Man, when you see a baby that has no milk, no nappies, no clothes, no nothing. Mom and dad died in the earthquake. The baby, the baby is left an orphan without parents. What are you going to do? So if you'd like to donate, that's the uh, website. Uh, you can go. If you don't know what to do, you can always ask one of the committee members or ask one of the uh, fathers, uh, church fathers, and um, 
and then they will um, give you all the information. Um, God bless you, and if you, um, but I will, I will definitely ask you to pray, to pray for this trip, to, uh, to be fruitful, to be um, successful, and uh, to be in accordance with the Lord's will and His blessings. Um, the other thing is um, our youth, um, Good Shepherd Youth Ministry, we are having our monthly meeting uh, f on Saturday, 1st of July. This is for those who are 18 plus. If you haven't joined and you would like to join, you can attend on Saturday, 1st of July and enroll on the day. So the first monthly meeting will be Saturday, 1st of July. Um, You can, you can also ask either Father Daniel or Father George um, more about this, but it will be at 10 a.m., I believe, on July the 1st. 10 a.m., July the 1st, here at the church. This is for our youth ministry, 18 years plus. Um, another reminder, when we make our way to, the, uh, to our cars, as we leave the church, if uh, could I ask you kindly to uh, be as quiet as possible, uh, to respect the surrounding neighbors, and uh, straight into the car and leave the church premises. Uh, once you're outside, um, <clears throat> sorry, once you're outside the church premises, you want to then stand, talk. Uh, it's up to you, but as long as we don't do that uh, in the car park or inside the church premises. But you can still stay. You've got another hour. You can stay here. And uh, I'd love to see you. I would love to see you. So you've got another hour. Um, the other thing is, that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Facebook, please. If you see an Instagram or Facebook in my personal name, it's fake. Don't fall for it. I've never had a, a, a social media platform, never will. So anything in my personal name, Bishop Murray, um, it is absolutely fake. It's not mine. Unfortunately, some people are using uh, this good, look bishop, good looking bishop to raise some funds. Um, so they're asking as if the message is coming from me, uh, saying we're doing this and this and we need your money, but definitely not me. Because when I ask, I ask for a million dollar plus. So um, it's definitely not me. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Let's stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. I will see you next week. God bless. standing here before you knowing you are in control resting in your heavenly glory let your will be done for me I cast my burden Unto you, Lord, knowing you will take them all. I'm trusting in your blood you shed for me. I know you've called.
God, you never let me go. Through my darkest days, you're with me. Yeah, you have always been my strength. I cast my burdens on to you, Lord, and knowing you. Trusting in your blood you shed for me. I know you've covered all my sins. I'm standing here in victory, knowing you have done it all. Your deserving of the glory. Let us praise your holy name. Jesus Christ, you live forever. 